Good morning. This is the day of the year I say to you, well done. <laughs> I've already had one email from someone still in their pajamas saying, first time they ever missed it. <laughs> and uh, well, now we have things online, so they will catch up later, as will others. And when people come walking in here an hour from now, we'll greet them with love and uh, try not to feel too much jealousy that they've had an hour more of sleep than the rest of us did, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, announcements. Um, um, Lenten uh, devotional uh, book group, I think most of you are aware of that by now, both uh, in person in the afternoon on Tuesdays and online in the evenings if you care to join us. Uh, great announcement that on Thursday of this week, Gospel Choir will get going once again, so a rehearsal Thursday evening for next Sunday's worship service. And Marcus and Dominique will be delighted to see you here. Uh, if you have been part of the choir in the past or if you feel nudged towards uh, joining the choir this year, please come. Council actually has had thoughtful discussion about the latest public health orders. Uh, we are, you can imagine what this is like behind the scenes because there's you and there's a thrift shop and sometimes these orders come so quickly, like it's all going to change tonight at midnight, that uh, sometimes it, it takes a bit of time for us to, to appropriate the news and to then be thoughtful about how we want to direct our life together. And so uh, what we're saying at this juncture, uh, really in concert with the region, is that uh, we're going to recommend that people still wear masks. Uh, we're hearing Dr. Henry say that as well. Uh, although the, uh, the mandates are not in place, we need to be making decisions for ourselves in, in, as individuals, and I think we need to be respectful of folks who are done and don't want to do that, and uh, we, have, we need to continue to be respectful of the ways that we are interacting with each other. So that's where we're at uh, for now, and then we'll let you know if, uh, if that changes and, and uh, that line about recommending mass comes out, okay? Uh, one of the things that the region has said to us is that particularly when we're singing, that uh, it would be good for us to keep our masks on. And uh, so gospel choir folks will we'll see them up in their masked beauty singing to us next week. Um, I wanted to say a word about uh, other thoughtful decisions or conversations that took place at the council table on Wednesday night of this week. As you can imagine, when we came together, we were full of processing what's going on in the world and asking ourselves how we as a community might respond to that. Um, I realized that I forgot to say to you last week that there is now the opportunity to donate to uh, partners of the United Church that are on the ground in the Ukraine and in surrounding countries. So if you wish to do that, you can go on to the national website and make a donation uh, through the United Church. Um, and I think you're probably aware of other places where you can make financial donations. We had a conversation about what would we do in response to uh, refugees who might be coming for a period of time and how we might help out. And so we are, uh, we've got our ear to the ground. We're uh, wanting to be in conversation with organizations that are, are planning that and uh, to see how we might, as a church community, support uh, folks who are displaced from their homes. And we also thought that we um, might start by having a little bit of a fundraiser after our annual general meeting. So the AGM is happening on April 3rd, Sunday, April 3rd, and uh, we're going to whip up some borscht. And uh, I don't know, uh, Frank, whether you're gonna make the cabbage rolls or not, Frank. Okay, if you wanna know how to make the cabbage rolls though, Frank knows, and he told me how to do that on Wednesday night. Uh, anyway, we'll have, a, we'll have some kind of a fundraiser, uh, throw some money in the pot, and then we will keep you informed about uh, how 
we might, um, how we might reach out, how we might be supportive of what's going on in, uh, in our world right now, especially for peop the people of the Ukraine. Uh, I think that is all the announcements that I have this morning, unless there is anything else. Okay, let's take a moment to prepare our hearts, our minds, and our bodies to worship God in this place. The welcome that we extend in this place is as broad and as deep as we can make it. And so you are welcome here, no matter where you are on life's journey, no matter how old or young you are, whatever your marital status, your sexual orientation, your gender identity or expression, whatever your ethnic or cultural heritage may be, whatever your financial background is, you are welcome here, whether you consider yourself to be a Christian or part of another faith tradition, or you're someone who seeks to explore the mysteries of life and serve the ideals of compassion and justice and peace. And as a reconciling people of Christ, we remember that the land on which our church and our homes is located, has been tended by indigenous people and been part of their culture and spirituality uh, before, long before any of us arrived here. And so each time we gather, we remember this and we, um, uh, that the church is located on the ancestral and unceded territory of the Coast Salish people the Musqueam, the tsleil and the Squamish nations. And pain and broken relationships has resulted from colonization. And we pray that God will guide us in ways of right relationship with our indigenous neighbors. And each time we gather here, we recommit ourselves to um, to tending this relationship with our indigenous neighbors and to moving forward in um, a way of reconciliation and honoring of truth. As we uh, enter this second week of the season of Lent, this time when we prepare ourselves to enter into the mystery of Easter, we are very mindful, I think, of uh, what's going on in the world, of the violence and the tragedy that is unfolding. It's very present to us. And uh, for those of us who live here on the North Shore, uh, we've been present to violence this week in a way that has really rattled a lot of us to our core with a, a shooting at our local grocery store. So much in our world is outside of our control. And we lament that we can't uh, fix it or make it different. Popular culture has a way of saying to us that uh, if we just think positively, we'll be able to turn everything around. But our life experience tells us that that's not actually always the case. And so we come together and we uh, spend this time and we pull ourselves back from climbing the ladders of perfection to stay more grounded, to be in a place of nurturing the deep roots of our lives and in embracing our imperfect, good enough lives.
Let's call upon God with these words inspired by the 27th Psalm. Let's be together as people of prayer. Holy One, our light and salvation, we call out to you, sometimes afraid of the adversaries in life. Shelter us in days of trouble. Lead us on level paths. Open us this day to your grace and peace. Transform our frustrations into simple and good enough moments that fill our days. Amen. I'd like to invite the children and the young and the young at heart and the flickers to come and join me up front here at, a, at our gathering time. Hello, good morning, my friends. I think, I think Mike is going to go on flicker duty. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> good morning. How's the sound? Are we okay? Do I need this closer to my face? Okay. So, what do, what do those words say up there? Good enough. How many times have you, maybe in your life, just been like, oh, good enough? You know, like maybe it feels, sometimes we use those words to be like, I don't need to try any harder. And, and sometimes it feels maybe like a little bit of a, a cop out. I know when I first heard the theme, I wondered about, do you think he threw a rock? <laughs> I'm super distracted right now by the flicker and mic. And I had this whole thing. But anyways, we'll see if we can make it fit. So does sometimes, you know, this whole, the way we say good enough kind of feel like, you know, we're not trying as hard as we could or we're being lazy or we're just, you know. Does anyone ever feel like that? I feel like that. And so this week I was thinking about these words, good enough. And I was like, well, what if we tried to turn those words around and, and say, I am good enough. I am good enough to be here. I, thanks, Mike. What did you throw at them? A big pine cone. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Okay, I'll find my spot. <laughs> so yeah, I was thinking like, what if we turn the words around and like, I am good enough. I'm good enough to be here. I'm good enough for God. And then those words seem a little easier. They're a little more gentle on the heart. And, you know, then I've had a really hard weekend, and I have felt very out of control, and I want to do better. I want to be more than good enough. I want to, but there was nothing that I could do aside from pray and, and then come here this morning and be here with everybody who is good enough and know that even in my inability to fix everything <laughs> that I wanted to fix, I was okay and it was good enough. And I want to read a story to you about all the people who are good enough. And it is called a church for all, because we all are. So, Sunday waking. 
day is breaking. Let's go to our church for all. Look at all the diversity of people that are coming to church. Church bells ringing, joyful noises. We don't have bells, we have flickers. Choir singing, laughing voices, candles glowing and banners flowing. Come and enter our church for all. Weak and healthy, neat and messy, poor and wealthy, plain and dressy, all embracing, spirit gracing, each one at our church for all. Bodies wiggling, mommies reading, children giggling, and daddies pleading. <laughs> Toddlers flailing and babies wailing. There's room at our church for all. Hands receiving, but not during COVID. Hands connecting, but you know, distant. Hearts believing. Hearts accepting. Feel the spirit. Can you hear it? It's here at our church for all. So tomorrow is a very special day for our church. It is Pi Day. So March 14th, if you're a math magician, you know that March 14th is 3.14, which is a math thing. I'm not a math magician. So that's the day we get to eat pie, because it's pie. But for the United Church, we decided we were going to mess with the mathematicians a little bit, and we were going to make Pi Day the day for public, explicit, no, public, intentional, and explicit inclusion of 2SLGBTQIA+, and BIPOC inclusion in the United Church of Canada. And that is a really beautiful, big, long acronym which I will not define right now, but I made delightful little pocket-sized handouts that you can pick up after service if you want to know what all of those wonderful initials stand for. And this is the day that we affirm that all are welcome in our church. We are all good enough, and we get to eat pie. Yeah, right, dude, pie. <laughs> so I invite you to, after service, grab a little handout that'll tell you a little bit more about Pi Day here in the United Church of Canada and know that all are welcome and we get pie and rainbows are cool. And we are all good enough and welcome here in the church for all. Let's go play some games. Thank you. 
uh, Anne reminded me of a conversation that I had with somebody yesterday who asked me what church I was part of. And uh, then she said, oh, is it the United Church that you're part of? I said, yes. And she said, oh, that's the, that's the non-judgy church. <laughs> I said, okay, I'll take that. <laughs> She herself was not churched, but somehow she has learned this along the way, thanks be to God. And I did say to her, well, we strive towards that, right? <laughs> okay. Well, in today's uh, scripture re reading, we're going to see how even Jesus got frustrated when people didn't behave in the ways that he would like them to behave. It's unlikely that we are receiving death threats from the likes of King Herod, as Jesus was, but our well-being can be threatened by the idea that if we just try hard enough, or we're nice enough, or we say just the right thing, things in life will go our way. Like a hen, gathering her chicks into some imagined semblance of a perfect formation, we try to manage our lives and sometimes the lives of those around us. But what if we could let go of needing all things and all people to be just so and learn instead to dance with the unfolding of that which is simply outside of our control. Let's take a moment of silent reflection to ponder that possibility. Friends, hear these compassionate words from the psalmist. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Know that already God is offering us freedom from feeling alone in our need to fix what feels oh so wrong with our world, inviting us to let go of the need to be God so that we might recognize that God is with us, offering us courage and strength in the midst of very difficult situations and times and may we know that despite our often faltering steps in the name of christ we are a forgiven and a freed people thanks be to god amen i invite you now to stay where you are but to turn to those around you and to give a sign of the peace of christ to one another a bow or a wave and um, I guess if you mouth the words, the peace of, peace of Christ be with you, uh, we may not see them, <laughs> but the peace of Christ be with you. <laughs> morning. Whether you take what is written in the Bible as fact, metaphor, myth, or story, listen to the, these words for the meaning they hold for you on this day. Luke 13, 
31 to 35. At that very hour, some Pharisees came to him and said to him, get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day, I must be on my way because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often I have desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you. And I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. May the Spirit bless us with wisdom and wonder as we ponder the meaning of these words for our lives. much is out of our control. Isn't that the truth? If we didn't know that deep within our beings before, we certainly have learned that in the past few years. Realizing the date this week, I decided to go back and read my sermon from March 15, 2020. That was the last Sunday that we had in-person worship for what ended up being almost 18 months. Of course, we didn't know it then. That was back in the early days of the pandemic, before we knew just how much was going to be out of our control. I remember that on the Friday before the Sunday the 15th, I had an international student from Brazil arriving to stay with me for a few months. And that was the day that um, international travel restrictions were announced. So she got in right <laughs> just at the kind of the last day that she would have been able to come. So in my sermon that day on March 15th, 2020, I talked about how Nancy and I had gathered around my computer each day at 3.30, because that was the time of the briefings then, to watch the daily briefing with Bonnie Henry and Adrian Dix, who were just beginning to be a household name, so that we could learn what to do about, learn more about COVID and try to assess how things might be adjust, need to be adjusted around here at the church and in the thrift shop uh, to try to keep everybody safe. And I might add that at that time, two years ago, Nancy and I be watching the briefings side by side in her office with no masks on because at that time we weren't wearing masks yet. Hard to believe that now, but uh, we weren't. So this week on Thursday, just before 12.30, Nancy came to my office with her mask on and before she even said anything, I knew exactly what she was going to ask because I was about to ask her the same thing. Interesting ways that we find joy these days. Let's watch Bonnie and Adrian together. <laughs> Just like old times. 
So we sat six feet apart in her office and wearing masks and watched the latest update because it felt like a significant one, which of course it was. So in the scripture reading today, Jesus is getting frustrated with things not turning out the way that he thinks that they should. Herod is threatening his life and people are not listening or acting or accepting him and his message as he thinks that they should. But he just goes about doing the things he does, teaching and healing people. How many times, especially in these last few years, have we felt like things were out of our control? Not just with the pandemic, but also the extreme weather. I was just thinking the other day about the murder hornets back last year, the year before. Do you remember those? <laughs> Add to that the forest fires and that time that Vancouver had the worst air quality in the world, increased racial, racial tension, discovery of children's remains on residential school grounds, threatened democracy in the US, now a war in Ukraine, not to mention the ongoing difficult struggles of our daily lives with deaths of loved ones, difficult diagnoses, broken relationships. I'm sure that each of us has had a moment or maybe many moments where it felt like one more thing would be the last straw. And then not only was there one more thing, but then one more thing after that, and one more thing after that. And somehow, here we are. And now, as of this week, as a, uh, after m many months of wearing masks in all indoor spaces, it is no longer mandated. For some, this feels like a really good thing. And for others, it's a very frightening prospect. For some who are immunocompromised, it feels too soon. And for others who use lip reading to help them communicate, it was not nearly soon enough. When things that seem out of control for us, we hope that we can take comfort in knowing that God is in control. But if God's in control, what the heck is God thinking? How does it make sense that a compassion-filled, grace-filled God of love would be in control of this mess that we've been through the last few years. And when we see perfectly good and loving and kind and generous people seemingly pummeled over and over again with tragedy and hardship, how does that make sense? I think, I know for me, wanting to be in control of a situation includes the need to make sense of it and to try and fix it. One of the reflections in the Good Enough book for this coming week talks about when the author is experiencing acute suffering, and instead of trying to explain it or make sense of it or blame it on God, she finds it freeing to acknowledge the truth of the situation. I feel hurt because it's painful or I feel sad because it's tragic, or I feel angry because it's unfair. She says, you're okay to feel what you feel. We need freedom to acknowledge the brutality of life without minimizing or pretending or justifying. We need not rush to defend God or delude ourselves. It is terrible, and it is happening. I was reading a couple of interviews that Kate Bowler had for some of her podcasts, and one of them was with the Christian author Margaret Feinberg, who received a difficult cancer diagnosis when she was in her 30s. Margaret talks about how she was two weeks away from turning in a manuscript for her next book, which was on joy. She spent a year studying joy 
and then received her diagnosis. She talks about how she went from searching for joy in relatively good times of life to searching for joy in the deep, dark, suffering, painful places of her life. But she said that before that experience, she had never understood the connection between joy and grief. She said that when you learn to grieve well, you expand your bandwidth for joy. Sometimes when people that we love are grieving or suffering, the way that we try to control the situation is by offering solutions or trying to fix their problem, telling them that it's going to be okay. I don't know about you, but when I'm struggling, the last thing I really want to hear is that it's going to be okay. Oh, I'm sure it'll all just work out fine. After my daughter, was, daughter Angela was born, and before Heather was born, I experienced two miscarriages. And I remember people trying to console me by telling me a few things that at the time were not helpful. Oh, well, you have Angela, and she's healthy. Just be thankful. And yes, I was very thankful that I had a healthy child. But that wasn't really a helpful comment for me to hear at the time. And when looking back and reflecting on it, I realized that what I had wanted right then was just for someone to be there with me in my grief. Another friend told me, trying to be helpful, and I, I recognized that she was trying to be helpful. And I'm sure that I've said things like this in my past, before I had that experience. Um, she said, well, I had a miscarriage too, and then I had another child, and I just can't imagine my life without this child. So, you know, just, just think, you know, think to the future. Don't think about right now, and, and think about when you have that next child, and, and things will be good. And while up here, I knew that, and I hoped that, um, in here, it, it was I was hurting, and so that wasn't what I needed at the time. Of course, now I can't imagine my life without that child, Heather, who did come along, but at the time, I just needed someone to be with me in my grief. And so I know, since having that experience myself, that I won't say those words to somebody in the midst of experiencing a loss like that because of the way that I felt when I heard it myself. But everybody is different and those words might provide comfort for others because people find comfort in, in different ways. For some people, what they need to hear is, it's all going to be okay. So just like some people find the phrase, everything happens for a reason, or it's all part of God's plan, as comforting words, others think, well then, what have I done to deserve to be dealt such a bad hand? Or why is God punishing me? It's really hard to know what to say to people when they're experiencing difficult times. And some of us want to, want to fix things. I heard a great saying recently that I really love, and I think it's helpful for those of us who have that tendency to want to find solutions for people. And the saying is, don't just do something, stand there. Sometimes the best thing that we can do, to prov we can provide someone who's feeling like their life is spinning out of control, is our presence. We can reassure them but not by saying it's going to be okay, but reassure someone, I'm here, I love you, I'm not going anywhere. I'm with you in this. Don't just do something. Stand there. And sometimes that might be the most loving thing that we can do. When we're defined by the things we didn't choose, by our bodies or obstacles or even our own limiting thoughts, there's a way to feel like we're not eclipsed by these unwanted realities. 
and that is love. Love that pours in all around us, reminding us of who we are and of whose we are. The act of loving, which shows us how to make our way forward, how to connect, how to dig deep into those difficult places and pull out something that we can offer as a gift. We all have exactly what it takes to show up in the midst of people's awful moments. Chances are, there are people right in front of us suffering in silence. A big move, pending retirement, the loss of a job, an empty nest, a divorce or a bad breakup, death of a loved one, a difficult diagnosis. It can feel intimidating to know what to do or say. But they might just need exactly what we have to offer ourselves. So if you're bouncing between reaching out or not, just say something, even something as simple as acknowledging the painful situation with what a year you've had or gifting them a prayer shawl. We need love. We need one another to reflect back to us that we are so loved. We are loved. And when other people show up and reflect God's love back to us, it feels like enough. Over the last few weeks in Ukraine, we've seen what happens when people show up for each other. Amid the tragedy and inhumanity, we've seen stories of bravery and courage and solidarity from around the world. We've heard over the last few weeks about people from around the world booking Airbnbs in Ukraine with no intention of staying, just as a creative way to support Ukrainian people, or people who are purchasing digital art items from Ukrainians on the online craft marketplace called Etsy. This week I saw a Scottish tartan company who created a new tartan as a fundraiser. And then the company that I've completed virtual walking challenges and running challenges with during this past year came out with a challenge virtually walking through Ukraine. And it was, it was up within a few days of the invasion. And instead of sending us a medal, as they do when we finish a challenge, all of the money that was raised went to relief efforts in Ukraine. And they've, so far, they've sent hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, just from the people who have decided to do the virtual walk through Ukraine. I've heard of people opening their homes all over the world to people fleeing the country. And of course, prayers are pouring in from all over the world so that they will not feel as though they are walking alone. So much over these last few years has seemed out of our control. Two years ago this week, when we had our last in-person worship for 18 months, I remember thinking that we would be off for a few weeks, maybe back by Easter. I wonder how I would have felt at that time if I knew that the maybe back by Easter that I was talking about was 2022. Somehow, through each new obstacle that seemed to be put in the way of the life we were used to, we got to this moment today. For many of us, these last few years have ta taught us what we really hold dear, what we have missed the most, and what we have managed to find ways to not live without. A lot of, a lot of that, for many of us, is that I've heard is personal connection. Despite the difficulties that we've been through, we've remained connected. We keep showing up for each other. When people show up for us in our struggles, 
we are experience the presence, experiencing the presence of the God who shows up for us in our struggles. Not to insert God's almighty hand and fix things, but to walk along beside us, holding our hand, giving us strength and comfort. When so much seems out of our control, God is there, not to fix it, not to control it, but to be there, to hear our cries, to listen to us, and to help us to remember and know that we are not alone and we are loved. Thanks be to God. Amen. So this next hymn and the closing hymn are, are both traditional tunes. And uh, the irony of that is that they're traditional, so we probably don't know them because we don't often do traditional music. Well, we do traditional music here, but uh, sometimes what I think is traditional may not be what Mount Seymour thinks of as traditional. So just wanted to remind you that there are these books in the pews called Voices United. Uh, and you're well, if you read music, you're welcome to take them out and follow along. Uh, and uh, yeah, just uh, for those of you who are interested. So for this one and for the closing hymn, they're both traditional tunes. So maybe perhaps one, one way that uh, you can have some control in your life. <laughs> This morning we will enter into the spirit of prayer with singing.
God of compassion and justice, we journey through this season of Lent, mindful of your presence with us and your love guiding our lives. From deep inside, we yearn for you, especially when so much is out of our control. We pray for your presence with us, walking alongside us when we struggle. We pray for those who mourn, that they will feel comforted. For those who live in pain or in sickness of body or mind, we pray that they will find healing and relief. We pray for compassion and understanding as each of us have different levels of comfort with the lifted mask mandate. We pray for those who are oppressed, that they will experience justice and mercy. We pray for those who abuse power and cause oppression of others, that they may know compassion and a change of heart. For those whose lives are bound by war, violence, and destruction, we pray that they will know peace. We pray for Ukrainian people, for those who have lost loved ones, for those who have been separated from family, for those who have fled their homes and livelihoods, for those who have stayed and fought. We pray for those who have taken in families who have fled and for those who are protesting and risking their lives. We pray that love and justice will prevail. We pray for other countries where peace is not the reality. For Israel and Palestine, for Syria, for Iran and Iraq. In our community of faith, we pray for Anne's sister, Suzanne, who's recovering from surgery and complications from the surgery. We pray for Michael Andrews, who's in Children's Hospital awaiting a surgical procedure. For Barb Algerius and Marga Dowling. For Joyce Jones. For Jen and Dylan for Jim Thompson, and for Pat Dickey, for Sanjay, for Isla, and for Alan Johnston. And we take a moment now to name other names and situations that are on our hearts and in our minds. Ever abundant God, we open our hearts to you this day and offer these truths. Today we live in the fear that encompasses us. Today we live with the prejudice that is right in front of us. Today we live with the ignorance that dwells within us. Today we live with the doubt that holds us back. Help us, we pray, that we find courage in unlikely places discover the world with new and gracious understandings. Move to those places where love is needed and have faith that you are with us. Help us to know that we are more than good enough. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Each week uh, during the season of Lent, we're going to be raising up uh, simple, sometimes quiet, behind-the-scenes ministries uh, in our midst of individuals, groups of people. And today I want to uh, raise up what is the longest standing ministry in this community of faith. Uh, in fact, it's a ministry that predates this building. It's the ministry of the men's and the women's breakfast. Uh, they have been faithfully meeting for how many years? Did some say 50? <laughs> a long time, a long time. It's a ministry of companionship. It's a ministry of uh, doing something by standing with one another. And uh, I just want to uh, invite us all to honor those of you who've been engaged in the ministry for many, many years, supporting each other, laughing with each other, and doing heaven only knows what uh, with each other, right? <laughs> uh, and during the pandemic, uh, they both, can, both groups continued to meet as they were able. Uh, sometimes we'd come and see the women gathered in your lawn chairs out uh, at the front of the church, or uh, we'd walk by being around the world and we'd see the men gathered in the window. And so uh, we honor uh, your, your contributions to really to the lives of one another. And the, um, I know the deep value that that has had, uh, that ministry of presence. Uh, so we offer our lives in many, many ways in the service of love in the world. We offer our finances as well. Everything we offer is a blessing. Let's be together in prayer. Generous God, in light of your extravagant blessings, no matter what the state of the world or our imperfect lives, we offer our gifts and ourselves and know that you transform what we plant into the produce of love. Amen.
Each week we are going to be sending one another forward with uh, words of blessing from Kate Bowers and uh, Jessica Ritchie. And this is a blessing for when you realize that everyone is struggling. Blessed are you who see things clearly, where struggle is everyone's normal. You walk among the fellowship of the afflicted, a club no one wants to join. And while this life isn't shiny, it does come with superpowers. Superpowers of ever-widening empathy and existential courage that gets you back up after another fall. And a deepened awe at the beauty and love that can be found amid life's rubble. Like flowers that grow from the cracks in the sidewalk, these virtues blossom in you and thank God for you. Thank God for you. Blessed are all of us who struggle, for we are in good company, and therefore we will never walk alone. And now may the God who loves all creation, especially the struggling parts, and Jesus, our companion on this crooked pathway we call life, and the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, that loves to improvise in surprising ways. May this blessed Trinity go with us, dwell within us, and give us joy even in the midst of pain. May it be so, my friends, this day and always. Amen. <laughs>